I think it's fantastic. I mean, I've said, I've made my pledge. Um, I've got to do a piece on innovation tomorrow, and I'm going to be asking people what they think the best innovation is. And I'm, me personally, it's this. It's so you guys were the you guys were the core team who came up who came up with this. Damien, Did, Damien. Stewart. Did, right. Yeah. What I'm interested in is why. Why has it worked? One of the things I think a key driver yeah. is that actually we haven't told people what to do. Yeah. And it hasn't come from the top mm. down. So nobody's going back and saying, tell me what you pledge, tell me what the outcome mm. is, tell me what... Yeah. You know, it's, it's all out there. You hold yourself to account yeah. and other people to account. You know, I've got absolutely every confidence in the NHS. I have to, my mum worked for it for 30 years, you know. But there's a real risk that we don't build on that, we don't trust people, we work for the NHS to know what's in the interest of patients. What I'm interested <laughs> in is what happens next, because all these people that have made pledges are members of the NHS community because they work here or something. It makes more sense, or it adds value, if we can connect that with all the hunters, the customers. Makes sense. I think it's very easy to defend and we get challenged with, OK, Damien, this is just another little gimmick that's going nowhere. People might enjoy it for the day and it's just going to die out. But it's actually easy to say to people, look, actually, we've got things happening on that day which can easily happen again. And actually, yeah, we won't measure the output on that one day, but what we can certainly measure is whether it happens again or what happens to that individual's. I mean, Stuart's done a brilliant thing this morning. Just to say what you've done. Oh, gosh, that's, that's put me on the spot. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm GP, I actually work in Beckton, so five stops oh, down right, the DLR, right, just down the road. Right, yeah. But we said we're going to turn off the call board, the rather impersonal screen that says name, doctor so-and-so, yeah, yeah. room so-and-so, yeah. and actually get off our bums and show that the most important person in the room is the patient. And so we're going to actually make an effort to go and collect the patient, meet them, welcome them to the surgery and bring them with us into the room. What was the impact? Um, Mixed. Some people did actually ask me if the if it was broken, and that's why we were doing it. And I did say no, no. This is a, this is our commitment to you. It's not broken. I mean, but it shows you something, doesn't it, about the distance? Yeah, it does. It was. You know. and, it, and I think it said a lot that that we've got into a, a culture of actually just pressing a button and someone being the next the next number on our list, and actually there. Yeah. I used to run my clinic like that because it's impersonal. If somebody else goes and gets them, you should, in my view. Um, when you're running a clinic of any kind, you should afford people the same kind of courtesies you afford them if they're coming into your own house, because they're frightened, they're often scared, they don't feel well. So I think getting up, greeting them, shaking their hands, showing them into your room, I think is just a basic courtesy that should be widespread. But fundamentally, health and social care are consumables. And, and but as the largest provider of consumables pretty much in the world, we haven't really engaged with the consumers much. And I think we need to build on this to create some kind of movement that holds us to account in a much more direct way. But this is a signal. It's not the answer, in a sense, but it is a signal about where the answer might be found. People are ready for a shift. They're ready for some vision and they're ready to be inspired. And I think this is inspirational.